Hello, welcome to Paper of the Week. My name is Steve and we're going to be talking about a scientific paper and it's published in Sexual Medicine Reviews on Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators. And what are they? They're called SARMs or Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators. Now these follow on from SERMs, which is S-E-R-M, Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulators. And they've been in medicine for a number of years now. Um, a lot of them you may have heard of, like tamoxifen, which is an anti-breast cancer agent. Um, and so there's, there's, they've been around for a while. But today we're talking about selective androgen receptor modulators. And it's basically, the paper's titled Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators, Current Knowledge and Clinical Applications. Now this is a, a full text review. And the great thing about this paper is you can download it free yourself. So it's really good. Now... What do we know about this? Well, androgen receptors are receptors for the androgens. Now, when we talk about androgens, we typically talk about two, and there's more, but typically two, and that is testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, or DHT. Most people have heard of testosterone. That's a fairly potent androgen, but dihydrotestosterone is more potent. You might have heard of DHT or dihydrotestosterone as the thing that makes you go bald if you have too much of it, or it can cause prostatic problems, BPH. And then you've got this other thing called testosterone, which spikes at the age of 25 if you're a man and drops away uh, uh, every year, about one to 3% after that as your testes atrophy, which is something I don't want to talk about, being down 50. But anyway, what, what do we know about androgens and androgen receptors? Well, for any hormone to work, it requires a receptor, and androgen receptors are no different. Now, we know that androgen receptors are widely known for its role in male sexual development, um, um, and also on bone density, muscle mass, hematopoiesis, which is red blood cell production, coagulation, clotting, metabolism, and cognition. And this is very, very important because, of course, without um, androgens, all these things turn to crap. Cognition goes away. Libido goes away. Um, worse still, you become impotent. Um, but also, you lose muscle mass and all this sort of stuff. And this is why testosterone has a bit of a dirty name because a lot of people abuse testosterone, have to take too much of it, and you know these are typically the bodybuilders, and that causes major problems. But today we're talking about SARMs. Now, SARMs activate the receptors and modify the receptors, but they're not testosterone. And you might think, well, how does that work? Well, these are specialized chemicals that have been researched to find out that activate these receptors. And they work the same as testosterone. They activate the receptors, and the receptor then goes in, activates the genes inside the cell, to have that androgenic response. Now I've got a nice diagram here through the magic of TV, I'll hold it up there. And you can see here the SARM activating the androgen receptor, the androgen receptor and the SARM going to the nucleus like testosterone would, and then it having this powerful action. And that's how SARMs work. It's like testosterone. Now you might think to yourself, well, why don't you just take testosterone? Well, testosterone can be beneficial. The thing about SARMs is there's two advantages. The first one is they have vastly less side effects. If I take a bundle of testosterone, say, and I'm a little bit overweight or I've got um, you know, other things going on in my body, then that testosterone can easily be converted into estradiol or a powerful estrogen. And we don't want lots of estrogen. We like testosterone. So that's the first problem with testosterone. The second problem with testosterone is it's a hormone. And hormones should not be ingested orally. I know the contraceptive pill is one, but that has side effects. There are a few exceptions to that, like dihydro, uh, sorry, DHEA mm -hmm. is, is one you can take orally, um, and also you can take melatonin orally. So those sorts of things are absolutely um, fine to take orally, but testosterone you can't take orally. There are oral testosterone supplements, but typically there's two ways of taking testosterone, which is an injection, the most common way, or you can get testosterone creams to boost testosterone. So this is why SARMs are very good because they can be taken via the mouth, uh, quite safe, and they have an effect on the body. Now, what do they do in the body? Well, um, the first therapeutic use of SARMs that have been tested is for, you're not gonna believe this, it is for contraception for men. When you take a lot of testosterone as a man, your sperm count drops, and so it can become a, um, you know, a contraceptive for men. Now, the problem with that is you need a lot of testosterone and too much testosterone has problems. But if you take SARMs, then it can cause, um, in, um, not impotence, sorry, it can cause a lack of sperm production because when you activate androgen receptors, 
it downregulates luteinizing hormone, which is a hormone from the pituitary gland. And if you downregulate LH or luteinizing hormone, then you downregulate sperm production. So it's great as a male contraceptive. So that's the first bit of research that's been found. The second one is it can be used for male um, osteoporosis. So it's very, very good for building bone. And of course, alongside of that, very, very good for building muscle. The other use it can be used for is it's used for treating prostatic cancer. Now, if I, again, injected myself with loads of testosterone, it could turn into loads of estrogen, which is problematic for my prostate. So androgen receptor modifiers aren't testosterone, and they're various different chemicals. Um, and of course, that can be very, very beneficial for the prostate as well. Uh, one of the uh, Psalms called Psalm 23 or S23 is a very, very powerful one that a lot of the bodybuilders take for building muscle. That's also very good for the prostate as well. There's lots of different Psalms, by the way. Also, sexual medicine is very good for, for helping guys with their erections and helping with their libido and male sexual performance. Um, there, was a, there was a study um, done where they tested testosterone and the Psalms. Um, and these psalms uh, led to increased sexual behavior. So that's good. We want more sexual behavior. It's also very good for BPH or benign prostatic hypertrophy. But very, very importantly, this also can be used for conditions like Alzheimer's disease. When you um, get Alzheimer's disease, you get a buildup of plaque in your brain called beta amyloid plaque, and testosterone detoxifies the plaque. So as we age, men age, and we're not supplementing with testosterone, then our testosterone drops and our rates of Alzheimer's can increase. And this is probably the reason why you've always wondered why Alzheimer's is higher in women than it is in men. So that's because they have lower levels of testosterone. So it's very, very good like that. Um, and the study goes on to say here, of course, that androgen depletion is considered a significant risk factor for Alzheimer's disease and circulating testosterone levels are inversely correlated with the levels of plaque in the brain. So very, very good. So Psalms are very beneficial for that too. Um, so the, the, the novel Psalm NEP28 is the one that's very good for getting rid of the plaque of the brain. It's also very good for muscle, muscular dystrophy and cachexia, which is weight loss due to, um, you know, due to lower testosterone. So it's also very good also for um, breast cancer too, because there's androgen receptors on breast cancers as well. So uh, is it safer than testosterone? The question is asked here in the scientific paper. To put an answer, yes, safer than testosterone and can be used beneficially. So uh, the conclusion goes on to say, look, this stuff is good. We've got to, we've got to look into it. It can be very, very useful. Um, so this again was published in um, Sexual Medicine Reviews. And the title is Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators, Current Knowledge and Clinical Applications. So look into that journal and enjoy and um, pause it now. That's good. <laughs> and um, have a read of it, it's a great paper. So thank you for Paper of the Week.